For the past five years, they say they've had SWAT teams descend on their home. Yeah, yeah, you get swatted, huh? You get swatted, huh? Now to a frightening swatting incident caught on camera. Please come quick, I hear him yelling. Let's talk about the Doxpin situation and the intense drama surrounding it. We got kids on Discord swatting each other on live, bomb threats canceling school, and the scum of the earth all getting exposed on Doxpin. For those of you who don't already know, Doxpin is a website where people are able to post doxes, personal information that people can use to get you swatted. We're going to get into all that and more as we deep dive into the history of the website, the people behind its creation, and how it's becoming one of the most significant websites in a long time. This is the untold story of Doxpin. Grand County Dispatch. We now know more about the calls that sparked police responses that day. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you say again? The FBI wouldn't talk about his investigation, but state public safety managers gave lawmakers an update. Doxbin is a type of pastebin. Basically, it's where you can post in plain text. These posts can be read by anyone on the site. Think of it as like a stripped down version of Twitter. Take this post for example, it starts with some nice ASCII art, and that's pretty much the last nice thing about it. If we scroll down, we get some stuff like their age, their address, country, email, phone number, that sort of thing. Doxing derives from the word docs or documents, and it comes from the hacking culture of dropping documents. That could include, for example, sharing someone's home address, uh, financial information, telephone number, intimate photos, private photos. And on Doxpin, there are over 100,000 of these. So what are the people that are posting doxes hoping to get out of it? Typically, they want the person who they've doxed to get swatted. Now, for the purposes of this video, let's get a working definition of swatting. I know most of you know what swatting is. I mean, you literally clicked on a video about Doxpin, but for the 0.0001% of you living under a rock, swatting is the act of calling the police under false pretenses to get a SWAT team to show up at someone's house. Also for this video, we'll be expanding that definition a little. So if you order 100 pizzas to someone's house, that's swatting. If you get another type of law enforcement to show up, that's swatting. If you get anyone to show up, if you get someone to throw a brick through someone's window, that's also swatting. What the hell is that? I don't know, let me check. The Freeze, FBI! Down on the ground, down on the ground! Hands, let me see those hands! Tango team is at point, bravo. Suspects in custody. What some people may not know is there are two Doxpins. There's the Doxpin Clearnet and the Doxpin Darknet. Back in around 2012, the site would be acquired by Nascash, by Natchash, Natchash? I don't know how to pronounce that. And for the rest of the video, I'll just be calling him Natch. He got the site from an 808 Chan user who created an early concept site called Dox-Bin. Natch would rebrand to just Doxpin and the site would start to grow in popularity. Around this time, would start to get around 10,000 monthly visitors earning it a link on the hidden wiki, the main forum at the time for finding onion links on the dark web. But this newfound popularity would bring unwanted attention, and in 2014, the site would get taken down in Operation Animus. Remember, remember the 6th of November. That's the day when a global coalition of cyber police pulled off one of the biggest sting operations in their history. It's being called Operation Ominous, the opposite of Anonymous. That's the group of activists and hackers most often recognize wearing Guy Fox masks and staging big- Operation Anonymous could be a video all on its own. The Silk Road 2.0 and a bunch of other dark web services got seized by the FBI. But Doxman isn't a regular service and these aren't regular programmers. Natch passed on the site to what he called an interested party who seized the fucking site back from the FBI. How you do this is beyond me. I guess on Doxman, FBI does not raid you, you raid FBI. Uh, something like that. Some more story from the Doxpin Darknet days are insane. The at Doxpin Twitter handle was associated with an attack on the company Somatic. Another interesting fact is that Natch, who has not been identified, could be part of the Notorious Lizard Squad. This was a hacking group in the mid-2010s. They were responsible for attacks such as Xbox, PlayStation, and the Tor Network. Remember that last one, it's going to be relevant in a sec. Based on his Twitter at the time, he was tweeting a lot at Lizard Squad adjacent accounts. He also stopped posting around the time when a lot of the Lizard Squad members were getting arrested in 2015. And based on this, I think Natch could have actually been directly involved or indirectly involved with members of Lizard Squad, but I don't know if he could be a member or not. I just think it's kind of interesting that the founder of Doxpin as we know it, or at least Doxpin Darknet, could have been directly associated with such like an infamous hacker group. This is Sky News at 5, our top stories. The hackers who ruined Christmas tell Sky News why they targeted PlayStation and Xbox. 
If I catch any lizard squad, I'ma beat y'all lizards on my mama. You fucking with my game, G? I pay good money. You lizard land. While editing this video, I was basically able to determine that this is true because because I found the history section on the Doxman website, which confirms that one of Natchez admins was in Lizard Squad, and also he passed on his LOL Doxman Twitter handle to them. That friend being Anarchist, who was part of Lizard Squad. <laughs> Another notable incident was when they had beef with Twitter, so they just doxed the founders. And just a few months after that, in October of 2014, Doxman posted personal information against Catherine Forrest, a federal judge who was responsible for court rulings against the owner of the Silk Road, leading to death threats from the dox and harassment. In March of 2015, Doxman admins were also responsible for a hack against the Hidden Wiki, where in protest to CP links being posted on the Hidden Wiki, they changed it so that every link on the hidden wiki led to Doxbin. Like I said earlier, since Lizard Squad was responsible for hacking the Tor network, it just shows that their members were involved with Tor and had a deep understanding of it, and if they were able to hack the hidden wiki, um, this is something that else that can really just strengthen the connection between Natcha and Lizard Squad. Anyways, the site would sort of fizzle out from there. Either the onion links got taken down or the owners just stopped paying for the servers. Either way, Doxbin Darknet isn't really around anymore. Expect some archives to be floating out there, but it's not really much of anything. From this point forward in the video, I'm going to be referring to Doxbin as the Doxbin ClearNet website. If I'm talking about Doxbin Darknet, then I'll let you know. Launched in 2018, Doxbin is the successor of the Doxbin Darknet sites. KT and Brenton founded the site. If the Darknet site was gaining traction, then the ClearNet site took off. Its popularity soared over the years, especially in 2020 when people were online more, and it's honestly still gaining a lot of popularity right now. A big difference between the two sites is the ClearNet site really attempts to follow regulations and doesn't really want to get taken down. This knucklehead actually set up a swatting channel. He made $4,000 by charging viewers to watch him call in hoaxes, like this one targeting Purdue University. Purdue Police in Bellevue. You have until 9.35 p.m. to disarm or find the bombs. And he swatted Florida State University Student Center, laughing after phoning in another bogus bomb scare. <laughs> Guys, look, everybody is leaving. Ashton Lundeby served two years in federal juvenile detention. In December of 2021, Doxman is sold by its current owner to a 16-year-old named Arion Kurtage. Three months after the sale, due to poor upkeep, the two parties stopped getting along, and KT and Brenton buy back the site for around 20% of what they paid for it. Not long after, Arion is arrested for his involvement with the Lapsus Group. The Lapsus Group was involved with a lot of different fraud, sim swapping, and then uh, Arion was personally involved with hacking Rockstar Games and leaking GTA 6. Well, developing news tonight on a mysterious overseas hacking group targeting major tech companies. KPX 5 Sarah Dante reports the FBI is now asking the public for help trying to track them down. There was a lot of drama while Arion was out. He tried to take over Doxbin's Twitter and the Doxbin Discord. He also leaked the Doxbin database. But this ended with him getting kicked out from everything and getting clowned and doxed. In August of 2023, he was convicted and is likely on his way to prison in the UK. By the way, from what I can tell, KT actually has pretty good OPSEC. Here he is not even using his voice in a Discord call to troll a skit. She's not stupid. <laughs> Okay, yes. I know you made it, though. I know Brinson helped scripted it, too, because he sounds stupid. So I don't know what you're trying to say right now. From what I can tell, the site has been sold again in October of 2023. It's now owned by someone named Operator. Some of the members of Doxpin are part of Discord groups. One of the groups that I found was doing live SWAT calls on stream. I'm ready, bro. Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. Is that the same number you recalled? Yes, yes. Nigga, you gotta look up that. Remember that one doesn't work. You gotta look up the police station near that, near that address on the Doxman. Screw the Doxman. Oh, okay. Join the stream, everyone. Okay, mom. Watch the stream. I'll eat Joe. Come on, join the stream. They're swatting corn or not corn. They're swatting uh, Joseph. Or he's swatting Joseph. Bro, bro Joseph or random. You should, you should swat me, bro. Okay, I'm good. All right, I'll animate, bro. Yeah, guys, ready? Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm just screw recording this. If you does, I can see how we can help you. Hello? Hello? Yes, how can I help you? I, I heard my parents fighting in a, in a scream. They were screaming, and, and I heard a loud bang, like a gunshot. Okay. I'm very scared. What's your address? It's 
Yes, sir. Okay, just I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have cops respond there as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. And what was your name? What was your name? My name is Joseph. Name? All right. No problem, sir. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Let's fucking yeah. go! Nah, ha, ha. Fuck Joseph, uh, let's go! For obvious reasons, I'm not going to mention the name of this group, but anyways, this is still very brazen, and I think posting it on YouTube is very brazen. I think it's stuff like this that gives Docspin a reputation of having a lot of skids. I mean, posting yourself doing something like this is a big risk with just so little reward. While researching this video, I had the chance to talk to one of the admins for Court. At one point, this was one of the biggest Docspin Discord groups. They even had more members than Pretty. But the group is now shut down, and they were even mentioned in an FBI report. Also, that video of KT that you saw earlier was in Court. Remember guys, not all swatting is equal. One group known as Vile is pretty sick. The group featuring KT, who you know is one of the founding members of Docspin. Anyways, the group was involved in some serious beefs in the Docspin community. Their website used to look like this, but now it just features an edit and some links to articles about the group. Two of the members, 25-year-old Nicker Sorallo and 19-year-old Cigar Singh, would go down for hacking a DA database. These two members went by the names Omnius and Weep. On Doxpin, there's a section of the site called the Hall of Autism. This is where you go if you become personal enemies of the site admins, or if you're just the worst of the worst. This is where Morn would end up and other notable psychos such as Dark Rabbit, Meowba, of course Arion and Kirk. Let's watch this video from Morn just to see the type of person that we're dealing with. Claiming that I'm a manipulator and that I'm crazy and I'm cutting and I'm doing all of these things, man. And it, it can't be further than the truth. It <laughs> Yikes. It's not good, guys. I want to mention that not everyone who gets doxxed should be doxxed. Like this video of this kid who got doxxed. Like, come on, like, this is literally like a, this is a kid. Like, this shouldn't really be your personal enemy, but whatever. Just take it off, please. Take all the information off. I'm sorry for challenging 4chan. Or this YouTuber got doxxed, but Doxman allows anyone to dox you, and I think that is still good and still should be part of the site. Doxman has inspired some creators to emerge from the community, and you can hear the site's influence on the artists who make music about it. James Band has created some of the best music around it. He made that song, Swat You Maybe You Might Have Heard. I threw your docs in the bin, I see this shit as a win I GM'd you as it dropped, and now you're on docs bin Come on, it isn't that bad, it's just some pizzas, no cash Your life is over, it's done, now you can say goodbye And this classic, you're on docs bin, that plays when you go to the Hall of Autism Your docs is on docs bin, there's a pounding in your head Pizza sensei to your house SWAT team busting down your door I just broke your fucking car SWAT team coming from the yard Put your docs in the fucking- I gotta say I'm a fan of James Band's music Unironically, I think it's pretty fire Besides them, there are plenty of other references to docs band and swatting That have made it to the music scene You can definitely hear the influence on artists like Wyland As well as smaller artists and songs like this Doxpin is having a big cultural impact right now, and I think people are using it as an outlet. Either skids who want to feel like they're part of some dark underground, or those who need a place to expose people that have done them wrong. People are visiting Doxpin at higher numbers than ever. It sort of reminds me back the one year that I went to college, there was an app called Yik Yak, where you could basically talk shit about people anonymously. People would use it to post their grievances that they had with one another, but in a very like public setting. And I think that Doxman is serving the exact same purpose. Swatting, on the other hand, has been here forever. Probably since the first police department, there has been some kid prank calling them to show up at someone's house. But what makes Doxman swatting so vicious and so different is that it tends to be teens doing it to teens, not just like one teen doing it to a live streamer. It's actual targeted swattings, personal beefs that escalate to the point of putting each other in actual danger. If you want to protect yourself from doxing, make sure you don't post too much personal information online. You never know who is watching you. And for the people watching that think that swatting is cool, don't do it. It might seem like fun and games, but you don't want to put yourself in a situation you can't get out of. Don't just follow your friends, you will literally get put in jail. And when you're in a situation like that, all of your OPSEC, hacking, coding skills, whatever, can't protect you. So stay safe.
Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Go check out my last video about a teen on 4chan who literally hacked a U.S. senator. All right, peace.